I reckon they're in 10 by 1.25. I'm going to go M12. M12? Bill's back in M12. Tom? Welcome back to Backyard Builds. In this episode of Backyard Builds, we're going to introduce another little project that Tom's doing as a job, but yeah. he's going to film at the same time. Um, it's already been dubbed the Kebab Gatherer. It is a VL. It was Turbo? Was it Turbo right now? Nah, so it was a factory Bellina VL Commodore. Boring as bad shit. Um, the owner approached me, I actually used to work with him, um, about tubbing the car. So that's what's happening. So tubbed and four link VL. So if you want to learn how to tub and or four link your VL, yep. this will be the build series for you. Also got to smooth the bay and there's a couple of little rust repairs to do. But, um, we will I'll probably touch on that as well, just show you the process that I go through. Um, I like to file finish it if I can. It makes it a lot easier on the painter, a lot less bog in it. Better result for everyone. Yeah, so today's episode is going to be me giving Tom a hand just to mount it on the rotisserie so we can get it underway. It's not going to take away from the ute, still going to work on the ute on Sundays. And, yep. Um, yep. and I'll we can. try and be doing kebab that. hunter stuff during the week. Kebab. Kebab gatherer, kebab hunter, we haven't decided yet. Just, we also got merch. There is some in stock. There's some on the way. Um, our screen printer is in Victoria. So apparently COVID has been an issue, but that's the back design. That's the front design. We also have t-shirts as well. So we do a hoodie and t-shirt package. So for those of you that have already received half of your order, we are sorry and we will get you the rest when they come. Like we've had nothing but issues, I guess. Like parcels, like, going, parcels, like going, going, yeah. <laughs> parcels going missing. Yeah, so um, we're, we're, working with the, we're working with the screen printer. He's been um, pretty good to us, but yeah. Yeah. We are, we're chasing you up on our order. Everything's on the way. So if you received half your order, we are sorry. And we will send you a few stickers as well to make up for it. More stickers. Everyone loves free stickers. Yeah. So. If you want it, link will be in the bio description thing, or it's in our bio on our Instagram. If we could do like YouTube inserts, like. We can, I just oh, don't. Can. Oh, but I will. It's gonna be here. It won't be there, it'll be up here. It's in the corner. Tom has no, Tom doesn't know YouTube stuff, so. I just don't understand we do this stuff in. Yeah. <laughs> Let's so, get into it. Let's mount a VL on the, on the spit, just like a kebab. <laughs> Covered there? Yeah. Got me in the shot? Yeah. It's not my first time filming. It was Saxon's the other week. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry if it was a little shaky. Where the park is. <laughs> this is the VL old mate dropped off. Um, to have the motor out, gearbox out. It's still a rolling car at the moment, which is good for what I need to do to start with. Especially because it's got all its suspension components still in, it, in the rear. Okay, so we're actually going to cover modifying that. They're actually a factory four link anyway. So four link is four bars connected to the diff and they're either tri triangulated four link or parallel. This is parallel. So it has to run a pan hard bar, which is a link at the rear, which runs diagonally to the car or, or opposed to the other ones. And that just aids in its travel. So it stops it movement, but a pan hard bar actually moves to one way. Stops lateral movement. Yeah. So it's actually going to stay four link with a pan hard, but because of the way the tub goes, you end up deleting the factory spring and the factory shock mounting positions. So what that means is you have to mount an inboard coilover. So there'll be a link bar between them, coilover tabs, coilover will mount to that. Um, we will cover that later on, but today we're actually going to get it up on the rotisserie because I need to cut the tubs out and that's a prick of a job when it's on the ground so we're just going to get it up strip everything out of it should be able to roll it around pretty easily um, it'll make my life a lot easier and it's all about me so how are you going to mount the rear here the rear is actually going to mount through the bumper what i'm assuming is the bumper holes i'm not exactly a commodore guy despite what everyone thinks 
I think there's actually two holes here which would have mounted the whole rear bar. I don't know because I don't own a Commodore. So what I'm going to use is these standoffs. I got these made up by my father, but any machinist will be able to knock that up. It's 50 mil long, 40 mil diameter, and it has an M12 hole tapped all the way through it. So my plan is to run a bolt and a washer. Through the hole. Mount that on there, and then I can weld that to the 75 by 50. That should be a strong enough mount for this car. I've done it other ways with other cars, and it's it's almost virtually the same way. We did a test run yesterday with my wagon. Yep. So my wagon's now on rotisserie, just because I wanted to paint the bottom of it. But. Yep. The other thing is th this rotisserie is available on eBay. They're not they're not hard to get. They retail for about a thousand dollars. Sometimes they're more, sometimes they're less. It just depends on what kind of quality you want. These ones are about the $900 mark. Um, they will hold up to 2,000 kilos, I'm told, which is well, more, more, more than more. enough for a VL. I think it's stripped out shells about 1,000 kilos as it is. Um, fully adjustable, locking pins in it, and it has a hydraulic ram like I'm in a crane to lift up and down. So I've shown you how I'm gonna do the rear. We will move down to the front now. Do the rear first. Well, I was gonna say, do you wanna like stop it there and we'll explain how I'll do the front and then it'll just be like a nah, montage of us just mounting it. Nah. Nah. Do the front. Have two montages, break it up. <laughs> right up. Explain what you're doing. Explain what I'm doing. If you can. Do you know what you're doing? Not really. Okay. Like always here at Backyard Bills, we're just flying by the seat of our pants. Just wing it. Seems to work out. As long as it's straight out. So what I've done, I've just marked a center point on this bar. Realistically, it should be the center of the rotisserie, you know, if everything is all set and well. Um, that's 1420, so I've marked a 710 center point. Center to center on my mounts is 911. So I was literally just gonna divide that by two so I had a rough point on the car. So I know where I can line up my center marks. Then I'll put a center mark on both of these pieces, line them up, and um, we'll tack them on to these mounts. Then tack them on more probably. Correct, yep. We'll do exactly that, and then we'll drill a couple of holes in here so they don't actually slide on the rotisserie because you do not want that. Um, once we've got all that sort of welded up, we'll move on to the front. And uh, oh, the other thing is, there's actually a center bar that goes between these two. The whole series of like little bush guitar style, style bits of tube. They all sleeve inside each other, and it actually creates like a stiff bar between the front and the rear and the front. Um, that's purely to stop the mounts. So if you lift it up, they go like that. And if you didn't have anything tied, it'd just slip out. And then you'd have a really good pile of scrap or an expensive pile of VL scrap. Yep. So uh, we'll uh, swap this over to a time lapse and a bit of a montage. And we'll get the rear mounted. <laughs> Tom loves a montage. It's a montage. <laughs> 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 that is not getting out of that. What are you listening to, Tom? Got a Never Late podcast going here today. Thought we'd give it a go. Old Moses McCready and AO. That's it. It's her first episode or intro. Tom Slavers fans like us. 
Shout out to Simon Redmond. That's it. Shout out to Moses. And AO. Good podcast, boys. So far, so good. Keep it coming. It's uh, good some glue on this, shall we? Next, we've got a bolt 75 by 50 to the rotisserie. Um, I want to use M12 by 75 mil long bolts. I'm literally just going to drill a hole all the way through <coughs> all this. Bolt it on. So what's the bolt there for? The bolt is there to stop those 75 by 50s trying to slide on the rotisserie. Once we turn the car up on the side. Correct. We don't want it going up and then going plonk. No. That's Worst case scenario. You don't want to go up and then spin it back the other way either. Don't want it to go up and then have it like <laughs> seesaw effect on us. Ask us how we know. <laughs> Personal <Saxon>. experience. <laughs> Saxon. <laughs> oh, so I'm just going to pilot drill them and I'll work my way up to a uh, 12 mil drill bit. discussing here but we are looking at the front mounting points as you saw us just do the rear up um, pretty happy with how that's gonna go there's two factory threaded holes here that are like a, a nut tack to the back side of this rail um, I'm hoping to use those but I feel like I'm gonna take a slight notch out of the angle that I'm gonna use and the angles gonna be longish but it has to be longish so the car spins so there's no real way around it um, just have to deal with it make do with what we've got so what I was going to do now is sort of try and roughly square all this up to the front of the car and measure this so if the piece was about 400 long should work and then I'll just have to take a notch out of it just where that bead is there. And we should be able to pick up those two holes hopefully. Actually they're no more than 75 mil apart and it's going to be tight. Might have to pick up a different hole. Anyway, we'll uh, cut up the bit of angle first, try and drill it and see if we can bolt them on. How you doing? Couple of front mounts. Should hold it. Hopefully. We've got a special guest today, don't we, Tom? <laughs> <laughs> Is that Bill? Is that Bill the Builder? Cross threads better than no thread, eh, Tom? Doesn't matter. <laughs> tight It'll be tight. an inch here in a while. <laughs> Tide's <Weird>. tight. <laughs>
Kebabs on the spit. Tom's ready to now start taking out the diff and uh, front suspension. Yeah, drop all that out. Um, I'll get out and I'll chop the tubs. I'll sort of try and explain how I go through that process. The owner of the car has already bought uh, McDonald Bros Pittsburgh seam tubs, which I'll show you as well. He's also bought their four link kit, which replaces the factory arms up and lower and pan hard. Um, it also come with coilover shocks. Bill. Yeah, also come with coilovers. It does. Um, but I will install that stuff after I've built the tubs out so I can cut a few brackets off the diff, mount it, and yeah, just make sure it's all squared away, etc. So, that's it for this week. Much covers it. Next week we'll be back on the ute. Which we're about to start on right now. Yep. Tubs. I'm gonna weld yeah. something. <laughs> it's not happening, Bill. It's a hard day filming here. Bill's, Bill's in the audience. We've got a live audience today. <laughs> you should like an applaud sign. <laughs> Quiet, please. <laughs> Alright, well, uh, we'll see you guys next episode. See you later.